You think every car should be electric? Well, here are some inconvenient facts you probably don't know. This is part two of our series on electric cars. This guy's name is John Stossel, and he is straight up lying to the public with his latest video, Electric Cars Inconvenient Facts Part 2, and I can prove it. This isn't my opinion. This isn't just what I think versus what he thinks. This is verifiable and factually provable, and I'm going to prove it in this video. The real question isn't if he's wrong. We're going to prove that in a second. The real question is why is he wrong? Is it just that he didn't do his research before he made the claims? Or is it something more nefarious? We'll talk about that more in a bit, but first let's get to his verifiably false claim. We're gonna go over three critical pieces of information that Stossel's video gets flat out wrong. And as always, I'll leave my sources in the description. Here's the first one, just listen to this. How much of America would we have to cover with solar panels and wind turbines to begin to do this? Well, this is one of these areas that we have really precise knowledge. If you covered the entire continent of the United States with solar panels, you wouldn't supply half of America's electricity. Okay, so what he said right there, that's just straight up wrong. It's wrong. The question is, how many solar panels and wind turbines would you need to power the entire US? And he says, if you covered the entire continental US with solar and wind turbines, you wouldn't supply half of America's electricity. I have no idea where he's getting that information because he doesn't list his sources, but he's just straight up wrong. But don't take my word for it. Here's the US Office of Energy Efficiency and Renewable Energy saying they're wrong. Quote, solar's abundance and potential throughout the United States is staggering. PV, photovoltaic panels, on just 22,000 square miles of the nation's total land area, about the size of Lake Michigan, could supply enough electricity to power the entire United States. So not only is Stossel wrong, He's off by orders of magnitude. To put that in perspective, because I don't really know what Lake Michigan's size is in context, that 22,000 square miles would be about 20% of Nevada. Or in other terms, to provide all the electricity for the United States via solar panels, we would need less than 1% of the land in the continental US. We're currently using over double that amount just for corn, purely for ethanol. In fact, we have about 2.5 times that amount of land needed for just lawns. And just to make matters worse for Stossel, the US Department of Energy also says that because solar panels can be installed on roofs of buildings and houses, which will require no new land, it actually will be less land than that. And that study's calculation is using relatively inefficient older solar panels at 13 to 14% efficiency, Modern day panels are already getting much better than that, getting in the high teens and even exceeding 20%. So it's now estimated that with current solar power technology, we would need only about 10,000 square miles. This isn't me making stuff up to disagree with Stossel. This is Stossel getting his facts so wrong, it's almost hard to believe that he could do it accidentally. After all, he has an entire team of people involved in the making of each of his videos. To me, the purpose of his videos seems pretty clear. It's not to educate people on the drawbacks of EVs and renewable energies, because there really are issues with them, they're far from perfect, but when he does stuff like this, which is getting critical information incredibly wrong, it makes me feel like his goal isn't seeking the truth. And to make matters even more frustrating, he followed up that blatantly false claim about solar and wind with this. This is just math and physics. It's Amazing that all these smart people and supposed leaders say these things. It's upsetting. And he's right. It is upsetting. It's just math and physics, and yet he's either ignorant or completely ignoring the math and physics. It is beyond ironic for the guy to say it's upsetting for people to be making all these false claims while he himself is doing the exact same thing. But he doesn't stop getting things wrong there. Listen to egregious mistake number two. Roughly speaking, you have to uh, double your electric grid to move the energy out of gasoline into the electric sector. He said you have to double the electric grid in order to transition to EVs. And again, he's completely wrong. This is a talking point you'll hear all the time from EV skeptics, but it really doesn't have any merit behind it. There are tons of places you can look to debunk this misinformation, but my personal favorite is from Engineering Explained and it's here on YouTube. He does an excellent breakdown of exactly how much electricity will be needed for the transition to EVs. 
I'll leave a link to his full video in the description below. But here are some key takeaways. Transferring all passenger vehicles to pure electric would require an increase of 30% of the current electric grid's capabilities. That's nowhere near Stossel's claim of 100% more electricity, which I have no idea where he's getting that figure, but it is clearly wrong. This 30% is a significant increase for sure, but it is completely doable. To give some perspective on how fast the electrical grid has grown in the past, from 1960 to 2000, the US increased electricity production by 4% each and every year. So we know we're capable of growing the grid at at least 4% a year because we've done it for decades in the past. So then he calculates how long would it take with a 4% growth rate for all electricity used by EVs to be added into the grid, and it would take about six and a half years. Clearly, that's way faster than EVs are actually going to be adopted. That would put us at 100% EVs by 2028. But what his calculations are showing is that the grid could be capable of 100% EV adoption in just six and a half years. So the argument that Stossel is making that the grid isn't capable of handling EVs is just ridiculous. And not to mention that Americans on average only drive about 35 miles a day, so their EVs will only need minor top-ups and it can be done at night while electricity demand is incredibly low, which adds even less pressure to the grid. But the point is, transitioning to EVs is not going to tank the grid. In fact, it really isn't going to be that big of a change. Engineering Explained summed up that idea really nicely by saying this. The you know switch over to full electric is going to take a very long amount of time. It's not gonna be this instantaneous thing. And so for a 30% increase in energy production, that to me doesn't seem like a challenge. Does it mean companies have to make more power? Yes, absolutely. But are companies willing to make more money? Yes, they are. If you are a customer and you want more energy, that is a product they are selling, they will sell you what you want. So you want more energy, they'll sell it to you. I don't think that is an issue. So the takeaway is that no, transitioning to EVs isn't going to destroy the grid. It's well within the amount of electricity consumption growth that's manageable by our current systems. Engineering Explained actually went into loads more factors such as when we charge EVs, which makes a big difference. So seriously, go check out its video, it's really good. But to keep things simple, the increased electricity consumption from EVs is more than manageable. And it's in that same vein that Stossel gets his third piece of information critically wrong. Here it is. That's inconvenient fact five. We just don't have enough electricity for all electric cars. And we'll have even less of it if we try to get all our electricity from renewable energy like wind and solar. And here's the thing. The electric grid is quite a complicated system. I've made a bunch of videos on it, but they're kind of long and boring. So let me see if I can condense things a bit. Fossil fuel power plants are really good at producing electricity at a stable rate, a flat line, 24 seven. They run most efficiently when they run all the time. The problem with this is that they have to be able to meet peak demand during the day, but that means at night when demand is much lower, they either overproduce electricity, which is wasted, or they turn off power plants, which is inefficient and also wasteful. Our current electricity problems aren't so much total demand problems as they are peak demand problems. So here's where he's wrong. Solar, wind, grid scale batteries, and EVs are actually great for this peak demand problem. Solar and wind produce electricity during the day when electricity demand is the highest. So in that way, they actually supplement the fossil fuel power plants quite well. And EVs can be set to charge primarily at night, which because it isn't increasing peak demand, it really isn't that much of a problem. This isn't to say that EVs have to be charged at night, it's just to say that the majority of EVs could be charged at night if they're incentivized to do so. That right there is why most utility companies offer cheaper electricity at night to try and incentivize people to use more electricity at night when it's being wasted much of the time. But even if we forget about all that, we still have one critical factor that Stossel is completely ignoring. Cost of electricity production. Building new power plants costs money, lots of money, and that can be a limiting factor in and of itself. We hit an absolutely critical point in 2020, which was that solar power became a cheaper source of electricity than fossil fuels. That's a monumental moment for our planet and for us humans, because we know if companies can make money doing it, they're going to do it regardless of if it's good for people or bad for people. And so as of 2020, solar becoming the cheapest way to produce electricity means we are going to see a lot more solar panels. And as we know with economies of scale, the more solar that's deployed, the cheaper 
it's going to become, which means 2020 was an inflection point, and now renewable energies are going to become a larger and larger slice of energy production. There are loads more reasons why electricity isn't going to be a problem for the transition to EVs, but we'll stop there to keep things short. Now we have to ask questions about this Stossel character, because here are the facts. He got a ridiculous amount of things wrong in this video, things that are integral to the entire point of his video, meaning if he would have actually gotten the information correct, it would have disproven the point that he's trying to make. And this isn't the first time he's done this. He made another video about EVs, which was his part one, which I made a rebuttal to, where he also got loads of critical information completely and totally wrong. So here's where we're at. We really have two choices. Either Stossel and his research team are so incompetent that they couldn't do a few simple Google searches to make sure they were getting their information right, or, and this is a big or, they knew they were getting their facts wrong, but they had an agenda to push. I'll leave it up to you to decide which you think it is. In my last video, I gave him a lot more benefit of the doubt, but after seeing this blatantly false information that he's putting out again, it's hard to think there isn't something going on behind the scenes. If you appreciate this video where I'm trying to call out information that is inaccurate, even when that information is coming from a powerful and established source, consider supporting me on Patreon. I want to at least try to push back against narratives that I believe aren't spreading the truth, and your support helps me keep doing just that. If you found this video insightful and you want to help spread the message, share it with someone you think would find it useful, or share it with someone who watches Stossel's video. I think it's a message worth spreading, which is why I've continued to make this sort of content. All right, that's going to do it for this one. See you all next time. Peace.